Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. What? I want y'all to meet Dalton. Dalton the storytelling dragon. Hello there. I'm Dalton, the storytelling dragon. And I'm going to read you some of my favorite fairy tales. Are you ready? Let's get started. This one is called Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> so, Marilyn Schnapp, thank you very much for Dalton. He's adorable. And uh, I can't wait to show that to... Um, Little Sarah Marie, because it's so cute. It does all the things that you need for, for small children. It has lights, it has sound, it has movement. It's awesome. <laughs> so we're going to have fun with that. Um, and it tells five uh, fairy tales, and of course I had to listen to them all. Marilyn said she did the same thing when she got it. So, <laughs> uh, Elfie not doing well with SM pain. Well, let me tell you, the it should get better in the next couple of days because the humidity dropped a lot after those storms came through yesterday. But holy cow. This is the time of year, end of August, beginning of September, hurricane season, when that pressure just goes up and down, and it really makes these uh, poor SMCM kids a little bit crazy. Um, so, uh, someone saying, having issues on the iPad, can't get comments or able to comment. And let me tell you, yesterday, oh. yesterday I was so frustrated with this dumb program, so I didn't post anything for supporters because I wasn't sure whether we were going to be able to figure this darn thing out, but... Um, I think it, sorry, I have hair all over me. Um, I think it just miraculously started to work yesterday afternoon after Hugh played with it 400 times. I, we have no idea what the problem was. Anyway, um, so I want to talk about something uh, because I had a case with a bunch of emails back and forth uh, that was a nice little reminder that I thought, you know what, this person obviously didn't know this. And um, so I'm sure there are other people who don't know this because I have seen pets die. This particular pet didn't die from this, it died from something else. But um, I have seen this problem. I have had clients who have accidentally killed their own dogs uh, and cats, actually, um, with incorrect usage of either prescription or over-the-counter pain meds for their pets. Um, so, and, and, and this uh, goes along with the pain course that I just finished. By the way, I did take my test on Wednesday. It took me four hours, nonstop, four hours to take that test. One of the hardest tests I think I've ever taken. And I don't know if it's because I'm getting old and my brain doesn't work as well as it used to. But man, it kicked my butt. But I, I passed and so, yay. <laughs> Actually, I got a pretty good grade, so I, I'm happy, but it, it was rough. Um, anyway, uh, there are different classes of medications that we can use for pain. Some are over-the-counter, some are prescription, uh, but we really need to be careful with them. And just because something is safe for you to take, that does not mean that it is safe for our pets to take. And cats, in particular, are very sensitive to medications. Uh, they lack some of the enzymes in their liver to break down and uh, process 
a lot of the chemicals that are in these medications. So they'll either go into liver failure or they'll ulcerate their bowel, uh, go into kidney failure. They'll just die uh, very quickly. So um, we, we've got to be <clears throat> really careful what we give. So absolute no-no, acetaminophen, which is Tylenol, deadly in cats. One pill, you'll kill cats. I had a client once when I worked in the emergency room. Um, he was a med student, like a third or fourth year med student. And he came in with his girlfriend's cat that he had given two adult extra strength Tylenol. And I just looked at him and I said, please tell me where you're going to be working when you graduate. Because if you are not capable of even looking up whether it's safe for cats or two, figuring out that a 10 pound cat does not get two adult extra strength Tylenol, which Tylenol is toxic in cats anyway, you can't give them any. And obviously the cat died. Um, there, there, there's no going back from that. Um, we jumped through hoops, we gave antidotes, we did everything we could, and the cat died. I mean, so, no Tylenol for cats, period. Can Tylenol be used for dogs? Very cautiously. Very cautiously. If they have any elevated liver enzymes, any liver disease, you do not want to use it in them. By the way, you don't want to use it in yourself if you have any liver issues. Um, always ask before giving anything to your pet. Uh, ibuprofen, um, no for cats, possibly for dogs. I had one client once killed his dog with ibuprofen because he was giving an adult dose every eight hours for arthritis pain. The dog came in hemorrhaging from everywhere, went into kidney failure, ulcerated its bowel. It was hospitalized in ICU for about seven days. It died. With a big bill. So just don't do it. Uh, uh, naproxen, don't use it, bowel ulceration, kidney failure, aspirin, uh, something like over 80% of dogs who are given aspirin, if you scope them, they've got micro hemorrhages and ulceration in their stomach and upper intestine. So aspirin is really hard on the stomach and there is doggy aspirin that you can buy, um, I don't recommend it. It's over the counter. I do not recommend giving it to your dog. And if you mix aspirin with a non-steroidal, Rimadyl, Deramax, Meloxicam, uh, Prevacox, pick one, there's a bunch of them out there. If you mix that with aspirin, you will kill your dog. The two together will cause kidney failure and bowel ulceration, perforated ulcers, death. Do not give them together. Very important. I've had multiple clients kill their pets that way because they were giving aspirin and then either at an emergency service, another veterinarian, or through us were prescribed a non-steroidal but didn't tell the veterinarian that the pet was also on aspirin. So if you are giving anything, any supplement at all, or any over-the-counter medication to your pet, you need to let the veterinarian know that so that they don't accidentally prescribe something that is going to kill your pet because of a drug interaction. Cats can't metabolize aspirin nearly as well. So the aspirin dose for cats is one of the, either a half or one of the little 81 milligram baby aspirins, no more often than twice a week. So like Wednesday and Sunday. We don't prescribe aspirin in cats because they don't metabolize it well. So. You never want to just grab something out of your medicine chest and give it to your pet. Even supplements. Don't use human vitamin D supplements. The concentration is way too high in those drugs. It'll cause kidney failure in your animals. If you're going to use a vitamin D supplement for your pets, it's got to be one that is made for pets in a dose strength that is appropriate for them. So, um, it is, it is really important that you ask questions and that you also let your veterinarian know what you're giving already. Um, in the email case that I got, the, the dog was on aspirin. Uh, I don't know if the veterinarian knew or didn't know, but the veterinarian prescribed a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. And there was only a two-day period in between the aspirin and the NSAID. 
if you were going to switch from one end said to another, so if you've been using Rimadyl and it's not working and you want to switch to Deramax or Galaprant or something else, you need minimum five, preferably seven days with no NSAIDs on board before you give a new one. Because two on top of each other, you're going to get bowel ulceration. And if you get a perforated bowel ulcer, you've got peritonitis and you've got a dead animal. They die very quickly. So very, very important for that washout period to occur. And I do not recommend uh, covering up symptoms. So if you are prescribed something like Rimadyl, Deramax, any of the NSAIDs, aspirin, anything, if you are giving a pain med to your pet, and they develop any vomiting, any diarrhea, any blood in the stool, any straining, um, lack of appetite, stop the medication immediately. Do not just cover up the symptoms by adding on famotidine or um, Zantac or something else. <clears throat> if you cover up the symptoms with an antacid or uh, a caraphate that coats the bowel, your pet is still having a reaction to that medication. All you're doing is covering symptoms. You're still killing your pet with the medication that doesn't agree with them. So if they develop any GI symptoms at all, if they have an increased thirst and urination, because these drugs can be very hard on the kidneys, very hard on the liver, very hard on the bowel. Um, they can be given safely to many animals. NSAIDs are the number one pain medication used in veterinary medicine, but must be used carefully. You must monitor lab work. Um, any pets that we have that are on chronic meds are getting lab work every three months and you must do that. Okay. Um, if your dog's allergic to fish, what supplements to give them as an alternative? Well, uh, First, you got to figure out which fish they're allergic to. They might be allergic to shellfish. They might be allergic to whitefish. They might be allergic to salmon. They're not all the same. It's different proteins. Uh, so we do have some pets who are allergic to whitefish, but they take salmon oil. And some that are allergic to salmon, so they take a whitefish oil. Um, you have to figure out what, which they're allergic to. And um, then it depends, you know, as far as what supplements to give as an alternative, it depends what you're supplementing for. Are you looking for a joint supplement? Are you looking for a coat supplement? Are you looking for, you know, an omega-3? Totally different. Okay. Got tons and tons and tons of stuff to do today. Busy, busy day. My phone's doing weird things. Uh, Brandy, you can get a uh, baseline anytime. Uh, three to four months, you're going to see some changes that are appropriate for a young dog.